Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. Hey, Satya, what's up? <laughs> hey. How you doing? <laughs> oh, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Marcus. Been a long time. Totally. I mean, geez, what? We recorded the last episode, what, 10 minutes ago? <laughs> two weeks ago in two podcast ago, time. <laughs> two weeks ago in podcast time? No. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us here. And uh, we're in studio at the Functional Bodybuilding Lab in San Rafael, California. We got the team here. And by team, I mean the three cameras, Nate, myself, Satya. If you're not checking us out on the YouTubes, you need to go over to YouTube, check out the vi- the video of these podcasts. Uh, if you're looking for a little bit, you know, if you... If you, if you really want to get the hand gestures, right now I'm gesturing very dramatically with my hands. Um, I speak with my hands sometimes. Yeah. Satya's very reserved. A I'm lot very more, calm. I have a calm persona. A lot more hands in the, in the, in the, in the in lap. The lap. That's in the my lap. style. Yeah. Um, also, if you want to come and watch and check out some of the cool outfits that we're rocking, Satya is always dressed, you know, better than me, Avi, Avi. But I got some cool shorts on. You're got, on brand. I got dinosaurs on my shorts right now. And uh, I also have this cool functional bodybuilding persist shirt on, which has a silhouette of me on it, which is a little strange. But it's so abstract that like people, I don't think people really see that yeah. it's me. Because um, that's kind of weird to wear your own wear face your own on shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? What kind of shirts do you like to wear? Oh, you know, pictures of myself. So it's all good. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's uh, that's so for if you needed a visual reference of what's going on, that's what's going on. Um, today we're gonna talk about all things macros, macro this, macro that. How are your macros? If you haven't had an opportunity, and we could drop this into the show notes, if you haven't had an opportunity to go over and check out one of our most recent YouTube uh, videos that we uh, have on my channel, Marcus Philly, because there's also a functional bodybuilding channel on YouTube, which is where we host a lot of our demo videos and exercise demonstrations. So those are two great follows if you haven't followed or subscribed to either one. But um, on my channel, you know, we're putting out weekly content, sort of lecture, not lecture series, but sort of like deeper dives onto topics. Breakdowns. Breakdown videos. Sundays with Philly. Um, we talked about macros a couple weeks ago and gave you some some do's and don'ts so if you want to get in there great but we're going to hit a lot of those similar topics now and maybe maybe break down some new ones as well um we also recently launched our functional bodybuilding macro calculator which is a powerful tool that was brought to you by yours truly satya she created a really robust and powerful tool that you can go and play around with. You can check out all the different ways that your macros could potentially arrive and be your framework for thinking about how to achieve your goals. It's uh, There's a way to check, you know, input your baseline uh, data to figure out how many calories do you burn at rest. Then you can put in different activity levels to see, well, how much do I burn every day if I'm a really active person or if I'm a sedentary person? Then you can choose a goal. You can actually say, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight aggressively. I want to have challenge fat loss as my goal, or I want to do recomposition. And it will set up some different levels of um, calorie deficits or calorie surpluses, depending on what you want to achieve. And then the topic of today, taking all of those numbers and then breaking it down into how many macros you get. Macro is short for macronutrient. Protein and fat and carbohydrate are the three macronutrients. And the tool itself will tell you if you want to have moderate, low, or high protein, carb, fat, it'll give you the exact numbers that you need. And then you can go and put them into your favorite nutrition calculator. And you can follow that for a period of time. And likely see results if you stick to them and we guide you on how to do that so um that's also something we can link to as well go get the go take the the macro calculator you know uh quiz basically and put in all your data and we'll email you a sweet um pdf that will have all of your personal information that you filled out in the calculator along with some 
work out samples uh, for you to go that are aligned with the goal that you chose. So thank you, Satya. You're welcome. <laughs> so a little backstory I wanted to share on the macro calculator. Is oh, yeah. That this is the second version of the calculator that I've built. And the first version was part of a previous nutrition challenge that we did. And one thing that surprised me was that people would go in and they would fill it out 20 different times to get different looks at their results. And the way the old one worked was that it emailed you every single time you had to fill in the inputs. And so people were getting 20 copies of their email. So this one, I just made it so that you can play around with it up front and then get the email as a result. But I'm always looking at things from a behavior standpoint because yeah. my primary role is in marketing and I work on user experience for functional bodybuilding as well. And so I want to understand how people are interacting with these things. And that surprised me because I thought, oh, wow, people really aren't just looking for the one answer necessarily. They want to get in there and they want to see, well, what if I do this? And what if I do that? And I thought that that really spoke to the level of potential uncertainty that people have when mm -hmm. they're getting in there and doing these calculations. It seems that there's a bit of a mystery of mm -hmm. what these magical numbers are going to result in. Yeah. Well, and I could also add to that too, because I'm that person, you know, prior to us having our own calculator, when I was out investigating a lot of these calorie calculator formulas that are out in the world that have been in textbooks for a long time, I wanted to do the game of, well, how much are these activity level uh, variables and how much are these body fat percentage variables and how much of these, you know, weight, height, age, gender, how are they all really impacting the results that you're getting? I wanted to see that and I wanted to press the button and get a readout and then go back, hit refresh and press the button again a different way. And um, it was it was coming from a place of, uh, I, I suppose it's like misunderstanding or mystery, but also just like deeply wanting to understand the process and see how big a change these these things really have. Is it like, if I put the wrong number into the calculator, am I, is it gonna tell me to eat 500 calories too much? Or is it gonna tell me to eat 50 calories too much? Is what's what's the difference in, in those two things? And um, so I've done plenty of that. So I would be one of those c customers or, or people using the the tool and been like, oh, this is awesome. I can just I can just click all these different buttons and see all these different numbers and I can take screenshots of them and I can compare them and I can use my calculator and I could totally nerd out. So it's definitely a, a useful tool in that in that regard. Um, but yeah, we, we do have to like, oh, and then the other thing I thought of saying was, I love how, <laughs> like you put in a lot of hours on this thing and I go back to like, it could have possibly been in your thinking to always revisit updating it, but I think I fast tracked it one day. I just sent you a message. I was like, so I got this idea to do this thing and then this, this, this video and this thing and this thing. Can you get the macro calculator updated for our new website? Cause I want to mention that in this video that I'm going to record like soon. And you're like, sure, <laughs> I can take a stab at it. <laughs> Secretly thinking, oh shit. <laughs> yes. I was like, I, I do like how some of my ideas will put put 100 hours onto Satya or Nate's plate like in a in like just a brief thought. It's like are you sure you want to roll with this idea Marcus? Like yeah yeah, this this could be good. This could be really good. I and I think it's a really I mean, I think it all worked out for the best, right? But it was like I lost that, a couple weekends on that, that one. That no, moment, no big deal. <laughs> and there was which led to the like, you know, I think I need a weekend off. Like I'm really struggling. I'm really burned out. <laughs> really burned out. It's like, yeah, it's probably because I just threw the macro thing into your plate unexpectedly two weeks ago and you needed to basically spend every waking hour on it that you weren't with your kids or doing your other jobs. It's all good. <laughs> okay. So here we are. We're talking macros. Yep. You all still with us, hopefully. Um what what do people need to know? What what are the questions that you see? You're the Reddit junkie. What are they asking? What do oh, people yeah. want to know? Oh, yeah. All the things. Well, first, I think it's really important to lay out what we were talking about a second ago, which is that when you input all these different things into your calculation, you could come up with a huge variation in the number of total calories that it yeah. recommends that you eat every day. And so I think it's very important to get a sense of, well, what 
where could I possibly go wrong here in leading me down some path on this calculator that's going to not lead to the result that I'm looking for? Right. So what are the what are the what are the variables that you input that have the most dramatic change to the outputs of the uh, of the calculator of any calculator? But our, we'll talk specifically about ours. So that's one for right. sure. Yeah, and. Also, with our calculator, there are two potential formulas that it could use. One is that if you fill in your body fat percentage, if you know that to an accurate enough degree, it will give you a more accurate reading of your potential Mm -hmm. calories that you could burn. And if you don't fill out that percentage, it will still calculate it for you, but it's going to be a lot more general guessing off of your height and your age and your weight, what your body fat percentage actually is. Yep. Yeah. Um, this might be a good time to say this, and I'm going to bring it up because I saw it recently. It's an old infographic that has been in, f- in front of my eyes a number of times. Um, we're here about to break down how to calculate macros, how to use this tool, what things are going to yield the biggest change in outputs on the, on the calculations. Um, there's an infographic that Precision Nutrition put out, which is basically just, a, you know, a, a a visual representation of a study that was done and not by them, but by, uh, I, I don't know who the, what, what research group did this, but I'll, I'll break it down. Basically it was, you took, let's say 50 people. Okay. Those 50 people you added, I want to say it was like 500 to a thousand calories. Maybe it was, let's say it was called 500. You added 500 calories to their each each of their diets every day and they did that for a month so 500 calories a day 3500 calories a week you know it was they're they're in a surplus everyone began at where they were at we put them all in the same relative surplus i'm sorry it it may have even been a thousand calories a day i believe it was a thousand calories a day added so the expectation based upon the science and the formulas is that if you add a thousand calories to your diet over the course of 30 days, everybody should have gained 15 pounds or 12 pounds, right? Because you can do a math, you can do math on that where it's like 3,500 calories is about one pound of fat. So everyone should have gained X number of pounds of fat. That's the theoretical model. But then in reality, you track those people and all you did was change their diet. They could choose how they wanted to like impact their daily activities and so forth. At the end of the study, there were people, individuals that had only gained one pound and there were individuals that had gained nine pounds. Nobody gained the theoretical 12 to 15 pounds or whatever it was. Meaning that even in the worst case scenario, there are metabolic adaptations that happen along the way that slow down the weight gain process. Your body's like, I have extra energy. I'm going to use it in some way. And in the best case scenario, those individuals had extra energy and they used a lot of that energy for other activities. They increased their activity throughout the day. Maybe they felt inspired to do some more exercise. Maybe their body just turned on their turned on their metabolism. Maybe it had been slow and they ramped back up. This was connected to a reverse dieting topic that was being brought up there. So all of that is to say, look, if you get a calculation wrong, it's not the end of the world and it's not like you're going to if you're starting to eat too many calories a day it doesn't mean that you're going to like overnight you know have a tremendous weight gain um and the errors that we're going to talk about in calculating macros are not in the in the order of a thousand to two thousand they're in at most a couple hundred so you wouldn't even fall into what this group is you know doing here where does this become a problem? Where do like excess calories really become an issue for people? It's when there's massive fluctuations, like you're eating in a surplus, then you really binge on something, you have a big day, your activity is dropping, you're being sedentary, you're not mindful of these things, like over long periods of time, that's how weight gain can really happen. Somebody who's gonna track macros is pretty, like they're very aware what's going on. like. I don't know anybody that's tracking macros and is just oblivious to like what's happening to their body. They're going to be paying attention to their weight. They're going to be looking at themselves in the mirror. They're going to be thinking about it just to a certain degree. So I don't want to like have people be fearful, like, 
oh, if I put the wrong number in, like I'm going to gain 10 pounds. Like that's not how this is going to work. Um, so anyway, I thought that was an interesting little tidbit to think about. Um, but there are still some errors and mistakes that people can make. And, you know, where should you be focused? Well, the mac macro calculators uh, or these calculators, these we'll call them calorie calculators first and foremost, because that's what they do. They calculate, they calculate how much energy you need, which is calories. Then we break it down into macronutrients. So first it's a calorie calculating tool. And then secondarily, it's a macro calculating tool because you can't get macros without a base of calories. The way you start getting calories is your, the, these formulas need to know two variables. That's it. They need to know how much you weigh and how much of that body weight is lean tissue and how much is fat mass. Because fat mass has a certain amount of metabolic activity and lean tissue has a certain amount of metabolic activity. Like just for simplicity sake, 10 pounds of lean tissue burns 100 calories, 10 pounds of fat burns 10 calories. It's a, it's a significant enough difference. The fat's very quiet and not active. Lean tissue is very active. So we want to figure that out. If you know you're 100, you weigh 100 pounds and you're 10% body fat, that means you have 90 pounds of lean tissue and 10 pounds of fat. The formulas take those numbers, input them, and they spit out whatever, 1,500. You need 1,500 calories to just survive at rest. So again, let me break that down. You need your total body weight and you need your percentage of body fat. Those are the two variables you need to get it. You don't need gender. You don't need height. You don't need weight. You don't need age. Those things don't impact the end result of that calculation. It's how big are you, how much do you weigh, and what's your percentage of fat? Okay. Really let that sink in because that's, that's a hard one for people to – like, but I'm 70. My metabolism is slow. It's like not – that's not how these calculations have been worked out over thousands of examples. If you know your body fat percentage and you know your weight, doesn't matter what your age is. This is your basal metabolism. So people are probably thinking like, I can't even listen to this guy anymore. He's lying to me because I know that age and I know that weight, I mean, uh, height and all these variables are impacted. Okay. Here's how it impacts it. If you don't know your body fat percentage, then we have to guess. How do we make an educated guess? Well, I take 10 individuals that are 200 pounds. This person is 200 pounds is 20 years old. This person at 200 pounds is 70 years old. Based upon the law of averages and what happens with people age and what we see in the world, who's likely to be more muscular? The 20 year old male who's got raging testosterone or the 70 year old male who's got declining testosterone? Obviously the 20 year old male is statistically more likely to have more muscle. So the calculator estimates, hey, you said you were 20, you said you were 200 pounds, you said that you were a biological male, and that you're this foot, you know, however high, height, whatever your height is. Okay, I'm going to assume you're about 18% body fat. You change one variable and you say I'm 70 years old instead. Oh, I'm going to assume that you're probably 24% body fat. You know, that's the difference, right? I have to guess because you didn't give me the number. I'm guessing. Change a different variable. Well, I'm going to assume. So you said you're biological male. Oh, now you're saying you're biological female. Well, I'm going to assume because you're biological female, you have more body fat. Women carry more body fat at the same body weight on average than men based upon hormones, based upon genetics, based upon, you know, what they're meant to do in terms of reproduction. So that's not like, you know, it's, it's, that's not a bias thing. That's a, just a, a biological thing. So we're using these, these inputs to help us arrive at a body fat percentage. All right. So then this is like, to, to kind of summarize this, go back to what I said. You need to know your weight and your body fat percentage. If you don't know your body fat percentage, we're going to estimate it based upon the variables that you and I have mentioned. And how are we, you know, going to extrapolate based upon those? 
if you're older, you tend to have less muscle mass. If you're female, you tend to have less muscle mass. So it's not a perfect situation. If you're a female who trains like a maniac and is super jacked, you're not going to, it's not going to estimate right for you. If you're a 70 year old who's super active and is relatively lean, it's not going to estimate accurately for you. If you're a 20 year old who's very sedentary and has poor health and doesn't, isn't like the average 20 year old male that's like, you know, vital, it's going to error it's going to be an error for you it's going to over uh, estimate how lean you are so that's why we always encourage people if you can get a relatively accurate body fat percentage from a reliable source that might be the best way to get good data on what your baseline calorie needs are when you use a calculator like this and the last the last piece that i want to say on that is if body if 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 body fat percentage is and your total weight are the only two variables that impact your basal metabolism people say hey my metabolism is slowing down it's like okay well how do you make sure it doesn't slow down you get more muscle or you maintain your muscle that's it that's the number one thing you can do so how was that for a uh, breakdown and what questions do you think somebody might have or what questions do you have? Yeah. Well, I think that there is a question about what to expect when you've arrived at some of these numbers. And I think that you did a great breakdown of understanding the role of metabolism and getting your lean tissue amount estimated. And so let's say that you've arrived at a formula and then it's an entirely different matter to go put that into practice. Sure. And so what's the connection between, and I think it's a little bit misleading when we say words like calculator, mm -hmm. because it insinuates that you're going to arrive at something super, super precise, which you are, but the fact is that life is not as precise. Yeah. <laughs> so can you help lay that ground of connection a bit? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I think that we're, we're, we're only like a third of the way to the, you know, quote unquote calculation that's so precise. We still have several steps left to go, but it's a perfect time to kind of address what you, what you're asking or what you're talking about, which is you're using a calculator. Oh, great. Like when I was in math class, like there were absolutes two plus two equals four, three plus three equals six, you know, my multiplication tables, like those are real numbers. Here, yeah, the calculator spits out a real number, but then that real number needs to go and be applied to life. And as I mentioned with the precision nutrition infographic, diet, behavior, metabolism, actual expenditure of energy is not, it's not like a true exact science. It has some wiggle room. It has some deviation. It has the ability one day to be up and one day to be down depending on how you move and what your motivation is and what foods you ate, et cetera. So this is gonna help us arrive at a concrete number that you then have to go put into practice for a period of time and then let the reality of life and your results and your adherence to that number dictate whether it was really the best number for you or whether it needs to be tweaked. I think generally people need to have a ballpark they need to get pretty close to a general number. And if they're adherent to it, they will have success. The vast majority of people, high performers or people that want dramatic changes, they're gonna need to dial things in even more. But those people are very aware of their bodies and they can almost intuit when they need to change it. They don't need a calculator to, you know, the bodybuilder who's in the last month of contest prep, they're not like, inputting their numbers into a calculator they're like yeah i'm looking a little i gotta i gotta i gotta shave off 100 calories this week or i gotta drop you know 20 grams of fat in my breakfast or whatever like they they can do that kind of thing just by looking in the mirror most likely so it is it is not an exact science the the science continues in the lab which is your life and it has to be applied routinely day in and day out with consistency so you can actually see did this work or did this not so that's why when we coach people 
We don't start with calculators. We don't start with calories. We don't start with macros. We start with general food improvements, habits, quality improvements. Then we move to how do you cook this stuff for yourself? You know, that adds a whole nother layer of control over caloric consumption and getting quality ingredients before we move to calculating numbers. And again, if you just choose quality foods and you develop good habits and you anchor your diet in protein and vegetables versus, you know, sugar and, and high fat, you know, sugar foods, then you're well on your way to being in a, in an energy balanced state and not needing to go and calculate a bunch of numbers. But since we're on the topic of how do I do that? I want to take it up a notch. I want to level up. I want to get more precise Then. Yeah, you want to be as you want to be as scientific as you can getting the number and then realize there's no perfect number until it's actually put into practice. I'm going to go practice it for 3 weeks, then I'm going to look at my results and say did this work? Did I get more muscle? Did I lose weight? Whatever, and then that's going to give me more of an answer as to whether I was I'm on the right track or not. And then at that point you can start to play the tweaking game. So, did that answer the question? Yeah, so I want to dive one layer deeper, which is into the activity parameter specifically. Yes. Because this is an area where I know a lot of people have questions. And when we posted this video on your YouTube channel, there were already some comments around, mm. well, okay, the calculator has a choice of maybe five different activity levels, yep. but I walk 10,000 steps a day and I work this job and I mm -hmm. do this for my training. And that's I think a part where a lot of people get a little bit confused about right. how active am I really when I'm trying to use that number to calculate these things. Sure, yeah. So uh, going back to kind of the nuts and bolts of how this thing is built, we talked it, I talked extensively about how you get that base number, right? So base number is has nothing to do with how much you exercise. It's just what you do without any activity. That's why they say like if you laid in bed all day, you had zero activity, you have, you're still burning calories. That's based upon your muscle mass. That's based upon your total body weight. Now we go into the next layer of like actual activity. Do you sit at a desk for 12 hours a day and then come home and sit on the couch? You're pretty inactive. Are you working a manual labor job, training twice a day, and putting in, you know, three hours on the stationary bike in addition? Well, you're super active. Are you like, you know, are you, are you racing professional psych, you know, b bikes? Like mega activity so activity level when you are working with these calculators is a multiplication factor of your baseline so you're if you say i'm really active it's going to take whatever your base number is and multiply it by 1.9 for example so it's 90 percent above baseline okay so the, the, these when if you go to a calculator and it's got three different activity levels it's got low medium and, and high like that, that could be 1.1, 1.5, and 1.9 is your multiplier. But as you know, there's you know we're we're not all like you know in these boxes of like well I'm a 1.5 or I'm a 1.9 or I'm a you know so there's somebody out there that's super active that's a three. They're they're you know Matt Fraser talked about eating 7,000 calories a day. His basal metabolic rate was 2,100. That's how much he weighed and that's how lean he was. So he's burning whatever three and a half times his baseline in addition his activity you know multiplier is through the roof why because he's training a ton he's doing a ton of weight training his body needs a lot of fuel to recover you know so there's these calculators can put you into a box because there's only five choices we're not going to put like a you know we're not going to have you input your own number and like just mad because most people don't even have a clue what that might be um but it really does this, this is the area where I think people are most confused and it comes back to thinking about like, well, I train really hard. Therefore I'm, I'm, I'm a high, I must be high on this scale. And these activity calculators are not looking at your, how much you exert yourself in a training session. They're looking at how much did you move in 24 hours? So if you sat for 12, you slept for eight, you walked around for, you know, you were kind of like modestly active for like two hours, like getting up from your desk, moving around, and you exercised for one hour, then for 20 hours of the day, you were sedentary. Th three hours, you were mi mildly active, and one hour, you were really pushing it in the gym. 
What's the total, the sum total of that? Probably closer to the low activity side of the scale. So that's how you want to think about this. And, and I think that that was one of the things that we've talked about before is people came into um, functional fitness classes years ago. They did a 10-minute Metcon that just made them want to die. They were like, that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I, sh I need to go eat everything because I must have burned all these calories. And in reality, they were burning very limited number of calories each day because they were working a desk job and they were commuting in their car for three hours a day and they weren't really that active. Uh, so I can't, you know, when I've, I got a couple of those questions on the, on the YouTube comments was like, Hey, I, I'm on my feet all day. I work a restaurant job. And then I also train, you know, two hours a day. Plus I ride my bikes on the weekend and I'm like, okay, I can, based upon that, I would suggest going in the moderate, you know, activity level or the, maybe the high, but you're not heavy, heavy activity levels. Like for the people that are like out there, sport performance, getting after it. Right. So, you know, we can take some specific questions and help guide people, but there's plenty of um, information to help guide you to your own answer. We, we just, I caution people uh, away from making the mistake of thinking, oh, I'm, I must be super high activity. Uh, because if you do the super high activity calculator, you could be adding another four or 500 calories to your daily intake. And if your goal is to lose weight, that's really going to be difficult to overcome this 500 calorie surplus. It's not impossible. You could just ramp up your activity even more and still lose weight, but it's not likely going to happen for somebody. So that's what we just caution against. If you're trying to lose weight, maybe err on the side of under-reporting your activity, and then you're in a better spot where you're like, okay, well, that was going to keep me in a, in a deficit or closer to a deficit. Yeah, and so the way to test that would be to get a close enough ballpark guess of your activity and then go what? Yeah, so you you got your baseline from your weight and your body fat percentage. You put in what your activity level is and that's going to adjust the number by a factor of 1.3, 1.5, 1.7, whatever. You have a new number. That is now considered your maintenance calories. Based upon your body, how it, it shaped and composed right now and how much you say you move this is how many calories you need to just be at the same level so you could take that maintenance number and you could go and implement it just that for two weeks if nothing changes to your weight you're the same weight then guess what you kind of got the right ballpark right you know that it's you're maintaining if you go and input that number and you lose two pounds in two weeks or three pounds in two weeks Oh, maybe you actually underestimated your activity. So that that's this is how you could, you know, determine whether you were on the right track or not. I also think it's important to note that if you wear a fitness tracker, that is not going to be the most accurate guess of how many calories you're burning in a day. That's correct. Yeah. This is a good time to, to mention fitness trackers. There are zero fitness trackers on the market that will give you accurate calorie uh inputs and outputs um, furthermore none of the uh, food tracking apps should be trusted either right you say food tracking app you they're gonna estimate what you need for calories their their um, formulas are even less powerful than what we've developed um, again they're trying to you know provide a service to millions of people so they're doing a, the best job that they can. And for a lot of people, it's useful, um, but it's not, it's not super accurate. And if you start to input your activity into your food calculator, you say, hey, I did an hour of ac activity. They're going to make an, a, an estimation and tell you, oh, you go eat 400 more calories. But did you really burn 400 calories in that hour? We don't know. We, they're, they're not asking enough detailed questions. So we don't trust the, the fitness uh, you know, wearables to tell us exactly how many calories we burn in a, in a day. And as an example, I on average eat in the high 3000 calories, 4000 calorie range. My fitness tracker rarely ever says that I burn more than 2700 calories in a day. That's my average on my whoop for months. So if am I in a 1300 calorie surplus every day? 
no way. Otherwise, I would have gained some some weight for sure, and I haven't. I've been the same weight for a long time. So anyway, that's just one data point. Now, those can still serve as, you know, good tools for other reasons, and they can provide a level of like, hey, are, am I being consistent? Right. Uh, so it's not a knock against wearables. They have other tools like recovery tools, sleep, sleep tracking, et cetera. Um, but I just don't want people to anchor their like choices around like how much to eat based upon the, the, what the apps are spitting out. The best way is to, what we just said is use the calculator to get a very, very educated guess as to what your maintenance level is. Then you go and put it into practice without deviation. Not like, oh, well, I worked out hard today. I'm going to have an extra 300 calories. Like, no, just follow the number for two weeks, three weeks. What changed, right? And at that point, you'll have some, you'll have some cues from your body. I'm, my body's changing. I'm hungry all the time. Okay, that, that's a sign you're in a deficit, right? As long as you're hydrating and you're not like, you know, just thirsty. Um, and Or like I gained some weight or I feel like sluggish or, you know, these are ways to kind of decide, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing this. The numbers are off. Yeah. Well, I do want to touch at least briefly on the macro specific aspects of the calculator. Yep. I think it is one thing that makes our calculator unique from what I've seen out there is that you can input your protein and your carbohydrate preferences and sure. then it will balance out the fat. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I know this is uh, we've, this is a longer discussion than we typically have on the podcast, but we it's it's a topic that's certainly worth the, the extra time. So if you're still with us, thanks for continuing to listen. And now we're going to get into the juice. <laughs> um, but yeah, then the last part, of course, of our calculator is we just described how to get to your maintenance calories and figure out what those maintenance calories are. You can take that a step further and you'll be asked if you what you want to do with that. But it's like it'll tell you your maintenance and then you can say, well, what's your goal? My goal is to lose body fat. So to lose body fat, you don't want to be eating at maintenance. You want to be eating less than that. And so we have a couple ways to adjust that number to give you a new target. Like, okay, maintenance is 2,000. Let's take it down to 1,800. Let's drop you into 10% deficit so you can lose some weight. You can recomposition your body. Um, so that's that. That's going to be the third step to get the number, the calorie number. Then, how do we break that up, right? Because two thousand calories could be you could eat it all as carbs. You could have two thousand calories of sugar today, or you could have two thousand calories of egg whites, right? Protein, whatever. You could mix it up however you'd like, um, and the composition of macronutrients within your diet can have uh, an impact on on the total on the results that you have can provide you optimal energy can provide you with adequate nu nutrients to like develop muscle to have a lean physique um, some some macronutrient profiles for certain individuals make it very hard to follow their calorie needs they get cravings and they want to eat more and more and more so we've provided ways to sort of navigate well, what is best for you and it always starts with protein and we make that the first choice that you have to input. Otherwise, you can't get the rest. If you say you, you know, what protein level you want to have, we're guiding you as to what's probably a, an appropriate choice. The more protein that you have in your diet, you know, th it leaves less room for fat and for carbohydrates. So you might not want to be like super high protein if you're on a relatively low calorie diet because then you're just eating chicken breast all day and you don't have a lot of other macros to mix in. So we give you some guidance on that. We kind of show you this is kind of where you should start, but if you have a lot of body fat to lose, perhaps you should move down. And in all of the options that we provide, there is always adequate protein to build muscle, to you know be healthy, to be satiated. We're not giving any options that put you at such a low protein level that you would have anything you know, you'd be, you'd be leaving something on the table uh, with your diet. So that's first and foremost. And then, you know, we look at, you have an opportunity to choose like well, what level of carbohydrates do you want to have? Do you want to have high carbohydrates or low carbs or moderate carbs? And we try and educate you and we're trying to educate the listeners that there's no like perfect way to do it. There's no right macronutrient profile. People lose weight on high carb. People lose weight on low carb. What works best for you doesn't necessarily work best for the other person. 
And so this is where personal preference comes in. You know, carbohydrates are great for fueling, you know, performance and training in the gym. So if you want to prioritize that, then perhaps you want to keep your carbohydrates higher. If you struggle eating carbs because every time you have carbs, it makes you crave more, then perhaps you're better off doing a low carb approach. So you're not always feeling this pull towards, uh, you know, sugary foods. So we give options there. And so once protein and carbohydrate are established, I want to have high protein, low carb. Those equate to numbers that we have established 20%, 30%, one gram per pound of body weight, et cetera. Those populate into your calculation. And then the rest becomes your allot allotted fat, right? Because protein and carbs equate to a certain number of calories. You have this many calories left. They're going to be fat calories. And that's going to be a certain number of grams. There's one last piece that we have embedded into this calculator, which is that we know fat is not the enemy. Fat is vital to functioning. It's extremely important to health, wellness, longevity, performance, aesthetics. There's a certain threshold that we don't want people to drop below with fat. If you eat less than blank percentage of your total calories in fat, you might be at risk of you know, undernourishing yourself or malnourishing yourself if you follow this for a long time. So we put in a safeguard to make sure that let's say you do high protein, high carb, and it drops your fat really low, but below our threshold, it'll auto correct to the, to the, bin, to the minimum. And that's just a safe practice. Remember at the end of the day, it's the total number of calories that you have and making sure you get adequate protein. That is going to be the most influential thing. That's going to change your body composition. So if you're like, but I want the low fat, it's like, well, you were at 25 and it bumped it up to 35. Like that, that little difference is not going to change anything negatively. It's only going to change things positively by keeping you healthy during this process of weight loss that you're going through. Yeah. And we would really love to hear what questions come up for you all when you go to calculate your macros, when you're putting them into place, when you're implementing this practice. We would love to know what questions come up. We're always working on new resources for nutrition. Yeah. What are the what are the friction points of having the number and then actually seeing it on a plate? Like what what's challenging for you? Um, that would be great questions to follow up with in a subsequent podcast. Yeah. And if you are looking for more personal guidance around this, it is one of the wonderful benefits of our coaching service where you have one person who's working with you not only on your training but your nutrition as well and understanding how all those pieces fit together for you exactly yeah yeah so um if you want more information on any of those please visit our website uh, functional-bodybuilding.com go check out the macro calculator that's linked in the show notes or the description in the youtube page and we welcome any feedback and questions that you have let us know how it goes. Thank you. Thanks. See you next time.